Kia ora Canterbury and no my hearty my welcome to Canterbury Live on Thursday the 30th of July. Well continuing on our path of words of the day, being that it is Māori Language Week, today is one that you will definitely better use in winter and that is makariri. Makariri is cold so maybe you can swap it around today and use it instead of it saying oh it's cold, oh it's makariri. Very simple. Rightio. This Sunday, 2nd of August, Andy Stankovic is the voice of Alice and he will be appearing at the Isaac Theatre Royal. And you could head along. All you need to do is purchase a ticket um, from Ticketek. It's going to be a fantastic concert. We've actually purchased a few tickets for my mum and dad. We're going to take them along because they do enjoy a bit of Alvis. So it should be a great night. But we do have some winners because we had tickets to give away and we had a great response. So the two lucky winners are, first up is Marie Hooper, congratulations Marie, and next Judy Kovac. So enjoy that ladies. The tickets will be available right now from our reception desk here at CTV, but you need to collect them by four o'clock tomorrow. That's by four o'clock tomorrow and they'll be a wonderful evening for you, but you can still purchase tickets at Ticketek. Well, we have other things to give away though. Last two days to enter to win a wonderful painting or print from Ira Mitchell Kirk, set in central Otago. It could be yours, and Ira will be on the show on Monday and we will announce the winner, the lucky winner. And if you enjoy magic and also a bit of flesh, wow, well, they all come together in the Machina Lounge at the Christchurch Casino. Yes, the Naked Magicians performing on the 13th and 14th of August, and we do have tickets to win and we'll be announcing those with Donna from the Christchurch Casino. So there we go. Phyllis Brown, we have the joy of having her with us each Tuesday or each Wednesday it will be um, to talk. But imagine if you could have her one on one, yes, for an hour. Well, you could be the lucky recipient of that. And as well as that, it's always a great time to head to the movies. And thanks to the Hoyts family, we have some tickets to give away. For all of these prizes, it's really simple. Just go through to our website, ctv.co.nz, and leave your details. And you could indeed be a lucky winner. Coming up on today's show, though, we have a live performance from Bristol Dollar, local band. Yes, they will be performing with us, and it's something about a gun. Not too dodgy, but a good gun. And a Bellamy's real estate, Margaret joins me talking about a wonderful new subdivision that's happening out at Lincoln, and you could be a part of it. That's right, a great investment. And Elite Six is a local group that meet together and it's all about networking and business, which you could be indeed a new member of, Elite Six. So we're joined with them later in the show. But first up, it's time to focus. Focus on our financials, financial times with Brent here from Focus Morning. Financial. How, How are we doing? Good, thank you. Very good. Now, we did have a bit of a giggle before we started the show about savings. Yes, interesting. Now, yes. And if you can say, there's lots of little sayings, save a penny for a rainy day and all that. It's, it's something I find we're probably not too good at in general. But um, like last week, we, we, last time we talked about, I think, you know, debt consolidation and then clearing your credit card, reducing the limit. And then as mm. a follow on to that, of course, is saving. And we, when we're presenting like loan applications to the bank, um, we need to show like a savings history. Yeah. And the biggest issue people have, and this is what we were talking about before, <laughs> is you put money aside, but you take it straight out. So we quite often find people will save $100 per week. Okay. But at the end of the, like they'll put the $100 in, and then the next week $50 comes back out. And then they'll put another 100 back in, and then the 50 will come back out. So the net result is a $50 saving. Now, yeah. when you're looking at these statements, you're going, well... This, is, this isn't good at all. Because so, the borrower, <coughs> or the, the, sorry, the um, bank does look at that. Correct. At your they, they do, and they think, well, this person's not as disciplined as what we would like. So the, easy, the simplest solution is just to save the fifty dollars per week and not touch it. Oh, okay. So, so it just looks better. So you're not touching it at all. I mean, you're going to your savings will increase slower, of course, but yeah. it just, it, it just, yeah put it aside and don't touch it. But we do realise that sometimes emergencies happen and you have to withdraw from your account. Those rainy days? Rainy days, but it's not a rainy day every single week. <laughs> rainy day for a new jacket. Rainy, correct. Or a new boat. Or, or a new like boat that. Yeah. Or, or that couch for the corner of the house or whatever. But I think, um, you know, we, we you just need to be disciplined about it, I guess, and, and be very careful. And if you are taking money out of it, or if there is an emergency, and, and I'd call an emergency like your car breaking down. Oh, that's definitely and an emergency, so yeah. so you, you need to draw the money out to fix that. Well, when you do, 
just put a note on your statement and, and even just print it up. And so that at least when we're looking at it and, we're, and the bank's assessing it, you're showing to them that, hey, we've, we've saved this amount of money and yes, we did withdraw at this time, but here's what it was for. That's a great tip. And it just... So print it off, write <coughs> down exactly why that was withdrawn and just put it away. Yeah. So when it comes to time when you do need to go to the bank, yeah. then you've got it all there. You've in got black it all there and you already know what it was for anyway because you've, you've obviously written it down. Because some of it is hard to remember what you do take the money out for. But the real key is just don't put it in and take it out. Even if you think you're putting in 100 and taking out 50, just stop that and just put in 50. So do we need to put blocks, if we have a savings account, because a bank can, we can set up certain things, so facilities that we can't easily yep. get that money. Correct, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of ways we can do it. You can have a joint signatures to withdraw. So, you know, quite often if you've only one signature to withdraw and your wife, whatever, takes money from the account and you might not know about it, whereas mm. if it's two signatures to withdraw, then you've both got to sign to get money out. And the other thing too is some of the banks that you can not have it on online banking, so you can't see it. So the other thing is when you when you log on to online banking, you can see that money sitting there, and that's always a temptation as well. But if you make it so that you can't see it on online banking, it's just going to accumulate off to the side, and it makes it harder mm -hmm. for you to get the money out. So you, to get that money out, you pretty much have to physically go into the bank, which no one likes to do nowadays no, anyway, they don't, do they? Um, and withdraw that money, and that'll stop you. And you can't do those little simple transfers. No, I'll just, just transfer it, it over. You can do it on your phone, can't you? On no, your iPad. Just, it's just so simple and so easy to take that money out nowadays. So saving, though, is a great thing, though, to instill when your children are young, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Because is it a habit? Yes. Yes. And some people are better at it than others, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> they have other habits. Some people don't need any training whatsoever, they're just fine, they know what they need to do and other people are spenders and I think as long as you know that they're spenders then you can work with them to adjust what you set up for them. So if they are spenders and you can see it in their bank statements then you, you take those steps where you two signatures to withdraw on the savings account and you make sure they can't see it on online banking. And what is it fair to say that you should remove yourself from temptation? that you don't go to the mall. Don't go out. Or you don't go on trade. <laughs> you, don't, you want them to have a life, but not to go on to the trade yeah. me, maybe, or, or things like this. These are all tempters, aren't they, to I think to it's just being, dollars. yeah, correct, yeah, like happy with maybe the beanbag as a chair, you know, initially, and, and not having the nicest couch and not having the that nice vase that's going to sit in the corner or the, or the nicest coffee table, you know. Actually utilising probably trade me to buy that cheaper stuff so you don't spend that money on things you don't need. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think we, some people have Sky and you can almost get rid of Sky and then all of a sudden you're saving $100 per month. Yes, you know, that, that's that, not that cheap either. Yeah, spending on that. So or for Netflix maybe. Or yeah, or Netflix, like there, are, yeah. there are costs like that where you mm. think, well, maybe I don't really need them. But instead of just getting rid of them and not doing anything about it, you get rid of them and save that money you were paying there. So, I mean, I use you know, $100, say, per month that you're using on something else. You can all of a sudden you can just put that aside into your savings Simple account. Simple as that. Yeah. And of course, if you do need some help with the savings, if you are the S word, the spender, <laughs> then definitely Brent can help you put you on the right track. And maybe that's all you need. It's just a just a quick chat and to um, get some attention made to it. But anyway, Focus Financial Group, phone 0800 334 338. The email is info at fgl.co.nz or a great website, ffgl.co.nz. And remember, they are on Facebook. There we are. Radio, now stay with us because after the break, we have Bristol Dollar. That's about right, isn't it? It's coming home, isn't it? Thanks yeah, to Bellamy's Real Estate. It is, Andrea. Yes, it is, it's... isn't it? And that's what it's all about. It's not just a house. No. It's about a home where you'll be for a, quite a few number of years, yeah. really, isn't it? Well, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Because it's, uh, you know, it, they are new. There's no reason why not. They uh, Just a small house, a unit titled, freehold, your own little property, really. Well, that you can choose. Piece of paradise, really. Yes, yes. And um, for the viewers, last time you came on, it was great. We showed some of the, the different types 
um, of homes that are available to purchase out there. Yes. But where is it located again? It's located in Birches Road, which is on the way to uh, Lincoln. So uh, just in its Barton Field su subdivision. Yeah. So there's a very large subdivision there and the village is at one side of it. A bit of trivia, where did Barton Field come from? Where did the name uh, come from? Well, there's, uh, you really have got me there, but I do believe it was the Battenfield Clydesdales, so there was a, a there was a farm. It was all farmland out there. And that's way. usually the way, isn't it? With any of these sort of subdivisions, there was a bit of history there, that oh, what they yeah. farmed. And I think there's a, you know, there's a difference. It could have been an apple farm or yeah. anything like that. Somebody could ring up and tell you exactly where Well, there we are. Put them on the spot now. Educate us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay, today let's talk dollars and cents, because that's one topic you can't avoid when you're purchasing or building a home. Wow, that's right. That's right, exactly. Sign. And that's what took me when I saw the sign. Really? From $410,000. Unit title, freehold. And I thought, where can I live in Lincoln for from $410,000? So I looked a little bit further and saw, yes, body corporate. So I thought, it has to be a village. And it was over 55s. I thought, wow. So I did go further down the track and I liked the fact that it was freehold unit titled for active over 55, so it's not a retirement village. And that's what we have to really establish here, it is freehold. It is freehold, yes, unit title. And as I said, for active people, if, you, if you're not healthy, no, but if you are, and I think our generation hopefully will always stay healthy. Well, you are, are aren't you? Independent. Fighting yes. fit and independent, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. So how does the finance finance work then? Well, with the, um, the with these properties, it's just like buying an own your house. You can actually put a mortgage on the property if you want to put in a mortgage on it because they have got the title. Whereas with the re retirement village, you cannot do that, and there is no capital gain with the retirement village. It goes back into their company. Whereas with the lifestyle, you own it, so you can actually on sell it, or your family can on sell it. So recap on that, you can actually get a mortgage on a property at Barton Field. Yes, you can. Yes, you unlike can. a normal retirement, retirement village. village. You cannot. That's a no. really great key point there. Exactly. Yeah. Well, they are licensed occupied, so they go back into the company fund and they get a decreased amount. Whereas with owning the lifestyle, as obviously real estate just booms, mm. as it will boom, your property will boom. So it's just the same as anybody owning their own property. So Margaret, can I just ask you though, we may have built a home or uh, bought a home many moons ago, the mortgage was all paid for, and this is a whole new world to us about purchasing a new home and building. Who's there to walk us through on the journey to Bartonfield? Uh, who's there? Well, probably myself. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I've purchased. So therefore, I believe in, in the product. So I think it's it's pretty good. It's pretty safe. It's pretty sound. And there's obviously at the Bellamy's office. There's people there that will guide them through as well. Um, but no, it's um, it's very it's very easy. Once and you want see that, it, don't you? Yes. It has to be enjoyable, doesn't it? The whole journey. Oh, absolutely. And just seeing the product now, uh, well underway. It's great, and you can, uh, you know, it'll be exciting to uh, to be actually in there and um, and and show it off. That's when a lot of people will think, "Wow, people do like to see a finished product." They do, don't they? Mm. But you can still have your own personal touch, and I think that's the wonderful thing, oh, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, you can do whatever you like inside your property. That's yours. Well, it is yours anyway. But mm. obviously, on the outside, there is a body corporate, so they look after that maintenance side of it. That's part of your your uh, body corporate fee, as they will look after it uh, on the outside. So it always is going to be looking top. And really, it's actually looking after yourself. Exactly. If you have that sort of ruling, then you are only buying into quality and then the way it will look at the end when all those homes are yeah, built, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Great. So you heard it there. Very simple indeed. I There's some lovely key points there. Um, thanks to Margaret from Bellamy's Real Estate um, for this beautiful Barton Field um, subdivision that's going along. And we have some details now that will come up on board. It is simply just having a chat with Margaret and she is great. Have we got, got out golfing lately? Haven't had time. Oh, they're just too busy with the real estate, I tell you what. Absolutely. Bellamy's Everything Property, phone 0800 741147, a fantastic website, bellamy's.co.nz. We sell property for no commission, no fixed fee. No kidding.
Radio. Now it's time to catch up with Bristol Dollar, a gun in my hand. Take it away. Cool indeed, that was a gun in my hand. Well, do you have a small, maybe a medium sized business and you need a bit of, bit of help, a bit of communication? Maybe some networking could be a thing, and then after the break, you better join us because Elite Six are here to tell you all about it. I might have to wait, I'll never give up. Make it rain, make it rain down low. Oh dear, Danny, you just made a challenge there. Don't make me laugh. Well, I'm going to have to by the end of the segment. So it's simple as that. Danny yeah. Heck joining me from Elite Six. Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's, well, it's very cool. We've got an awesome banner up here, which has got your mission and, and your concept. But I guess exactly what it says. It's about networking, isn't it? Yeah. Taking your business maybe to the next level. How did it all come about? Uh, long story, but we haven't got too long. <laughs> um, basically, I um, went through a divorce, got... Um, had a burst appendix, nearly died in hospital. And then uh, I got out and I was living in a one bedroom apartment um, about 10 metres from a railway line and I thought, um, I'm lonely. So I started getting involved in the community out in Rangura. Oh, right. And then I thought, oh, I should go along and do some business networking because I've been behind a computer screen for the last 20 years. So um, I went along, got involved, and went to a B&I meeting. And then a friend of mine said, oh, you, do you like B&I? I said, oh, it's not too bad. And he said, oh, I'm starting up a new type of meeting here in Rangura. Mm -hmm. And he said, come along as a visitor. So I did, and I went along to that meeting for about a year, and I loved it. And the person behind the company is quite sick, and he was looking to sell the Elite Six. Um, so I bought the company, 
about two and a half years ago. And that's yeah. it. There's history. Yeah. And you've moved on from the divorce. Moved yep. on from the one bedroom apartment. Yep. Hopefully you've moved away from the railway lines. Yes. There we go. Right so now. it's all a happy ending really, isn't it? So what is Elite 6 for? Uh, it's for the small to medium sized businesses. Uh, for people, one lady for example rang me up and she said um, she's gone through a divorce, ironically, and she doesn't have a job. And I said, why don't you come along to Elite 6? And she said, oh, I don't have a business. And I said, well you're perfect. So she came along and she met the, an accountant in the group who said, I know three people who need part-time workers in administration. So she started working for them, uh, and then one of them offered her a full-time job. Uh, and it was really nice to be able to make that connection. What a great story. But m we've had so many different ones like that. So a lot of people who are starting up in business don't really know how to get through the barriers or what accountant do I use, um, do I need an accountant, um, <laughs> what lawyer do I need, how to set up a company, they come along and we just help them through that whole process. So not, not myself personally or our facilitators, but the people at the other, uh, in, on the table that are there with them at the time. What a fantastic tool, because in business you can be like, oh, can't, can't share the secret, can't share the secret, they could be more successful than me. But mm. it's not like that at all at Elite Six. No, and we, we really are more of a, for the people who are starting up and they just want to get some feedback and they want to say, look, I'm trying to do some brochures. Um, for example, we've got a wee brochure here mm. and I, I didn't design this, but um, I've asked people how do we go about, what do you like and what do you think and then they said, well, they ask us all these questions so on the back we've put out our questions and now we've got this brochure but it's, it's actually been you know, five or six um, months in the making wow. and then people help us put it together and they go, yeah, and we all helped. And listening, yeah. and what, and meeting a need. Um, so how do we become a member of it? Is it a simple process? Is it a lot of paperwork? Do we have to be cleared? Or No, it's quite simple. Basically now in Christchurch we've established eight groups that meet in Canterbury, six in the city and two in the outskirts in Waimak and also um, Pegas uh, not Pegasus, Rangiora. Um, so when somebody wants to get involved they, they basically ring us up and I have a coordinator that will match them to the right group um, and, and that works out really well. And even down in Queenstown, is that right? Yeah, it was quite good. Um, we went for a road trip, me and one of the other um, um, guys that run one of the other groups, we thought we'd start up Queenstown. So we had a lady who used to be a member of the YMAC group and she moved down to Queenstown with her boyfriend. Okay. So we said, oh, well, can you run Elite Six for us down there? She goes, oh, I think I can. So we trained her up and got her going and then we went down there and knocked on a few doors and got a few people coming along. It's only a small group, but we found because of our, our concept's really good. Mm. What, what the real point of difference between us and other business networking is that we sit in groups of six and we talk for five minutes each about our business. It's like we have the talking stick and mm. then we pass it to the next person. And each week we shuffle those tables around so you get a new group of six people to talk to. So even if we have a small group, like in Queenstown's got about eight members, um, they get to talk uh, each week and shuffle it around and the group of six is, is always what we need to run one group. So some of our groups have evolved, we, uh, the day, the biggest group we've ever had had 36 members Wow! and uh, it was a Tuesday and it was the day of the earthquake. Um, uh, so they met in the morning, the earthquake happened in the afternoon and the following week we only had 12 people there but those 12 people there had lost everything. So we all rallied together and, and tried to help, uh, you know, figure out where to go from here. Good and, stuff. Um, so we've built it back up from 36 members when I took over right. to 140 now. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Go, yeah. please, 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 I encourage you to go to the website, elite6.co.nz. It's about meeting new people, generating new business. And um, Danny's mobile number there, 021 9616. Five, two, really good stuff for a community. Thanks, Danny. No what the heck? Thank Danny. You. Good on you. Ah, hey, you now it. make sure you join us tomorrow because Alvis won't be here, but the voice of Alvis, Andy Stankovich, will be live in the flesh here. Have a fantastic Thursday. See you tomorrow.